are. Now what I'm going to do is walk you through some of the challenges we faced and also our model in terms of training as well. So, as Julian mentioned, um, regulation is a really, really key thing for us and I'm not sure um, of the audience today in terms of um, how different audience um, members are regulated in different ways. But everyone has regulation, everyone has rules that they have to, that they have to go by. But um, from a financial services perspective, um, at the time of our inception, it was the F FSA, and that's now split into the FCA and the, um, the PRA in terms of how we are regulated. The main key things um, split into four pillars. So we've got policy training, content, supervision, capturing, archiving, and retrieving. And I'm going to walk through what we do in terms of each of those there. But predominantly, it's, it's, um, it's not much different for social from a, bank, from a banking and financial services perspective. Um, you have to handle complaints within a regulated manner um, by, tele by telephone, email, digital. It doesn't matter what channel it is. And that, in a way, makes it slightly easier because it doesn't, the channel is completely irrelevant in terms of financial services regulation. Um, you, you must handle things in the right way. Policies and training were a big thing for us. So as you can imagine, um, when we originally went to our executive board to say we want to start engaging with customers on social media, control risks and risk assessments and processes and the, a, a huge amount of process flows were, were created. One that probably could go right on this room three times in terms of length. Um, the, the, to make social service consistent and efficient, we, we had to tie it to the existing processes of Barclaycard. So, as I've mentioned several times, you should not get any different experience if you speak to someone on the phone, or if you speak to someone on email, or if you speak to them on social media. The answer should be the same. Data is um, captured via Conversocial. So we have everything coming into one place. We have complete assurance and control that we don't miss anything, which I know we mentioned about people doing, you know, managing their platforms on, on, on Facebook and Twitter directly. The only way you can approve or, or monitor that you're doing that is literally by scanning your entire notification back to the end of time every single day. And it isn't possible, it's just not sustainable, it doesn't manage that. And we have the assurance with Converse Social that it just pops in like an email inbox. You don't miss anything, it all comes in and it's all handled and it's all audit trailed. And we, co we, we got to a point where until we had that tool, we, we almost got to stop. You know, we started using native channel performance, but it quickly became aware that we, ha we didn't have the control we needed. And if we didn't have a tool like this, we wouldn't be able to do what we do today. We also have to store data in, a, in the right way. So although Converse, Converse Social don't store any customer account information, they just store publicly available information that all of you can get yourself, plus maybe we apply a sentiment, but that's certainly not customer sensitive information. We do have to keep a copy of all of that. So um, on a constant basis, their data is being extracted and stored in our data warehouse as well. Um, for our own you know, data compliance purposes and, and nothing more. SLA is very important to us. So we, Julian mentioned earlier around merging contact centre metrics with, um, with real metrics on, you know, on social as well. So what, why should they be any different? You know, why does it matter? Your telephone team have got a certain average handling time. Why haven't your social team? It's all about driving efficiency.